So I'm Carl Coburn. I'm a crop pr protection technology development rep with Bayer Crop Science, and we're out here in Gothenburg, Nebraska at the Learning Center. And I'm standing in a wheat field that's getting pretty close to be harvested, and I just want to talk a little bit about post-harvest weed control. And so if you look over here with me, we got kind of a skip of where the planter missed. And in that skip, uh, we got some very tall Palmer amaranth plants here. And so um, I just wanted to talk about some options of uh, what you can do after cutting that wheat to get good control of weeds like this that are going to be, you know, they're going to be cut off uh, by the combine. They're probably going to have some dust on them. So the leaves are going to be covered and it could be a challenge to get herbicide into those leaves. Um, a lot of times you see Palmer amaranth showing up in the wheat fields late, getting close to harvest time. You can also see some kochia that didn't quite get controlled early on. I oftentimes see mare's tail too, sticking up above the, uh, the wheat. So those are really the weeds that I think are common to think about. Uh, but also you can start to see some, some volunteer weed or some grasses starting to show up soon after. So those are really the, the species that we'd be targeting with this post-harvest application. Um, so like I said, the, the plants are going to be cut off. They're going to be gnarled a little bit. So I think the more we can give them a chance to recover, um, to take up that herbicide and be able to move it in the plant, the better. Um, so we don't want to be following right behind the combine with the, the sprayer. Um, and, and hoping for, for great results. So I would say give it, you know, at least seven days, maybe 10 days after cutting the wheat to get in there to spray it for those plants to, to really recover. Um, so that being said, again, they're gonna be cut off. Um, I'd really like to have three, two to three effective modes of action uh, per species that's out there. And so if you're talking about glyphosate resistant palmer, uh, glyphosate resistant kochia or mare's tail, um, I still wanna have glyphosate in that tank so Roundup Power Max or RT3 is a great option because you are going to get help on other broad leaves that are out there and the grasses. Um, and then I'd like to have, because the plants are going to be a little bit beat up, some kind of a burner product in there. So usually the PPOs like a, a Saflufenacil, something like that, will help um, to, to really burn off that foliage. And then I'd also like to have some kind of a growth regulator, whether that's uh, 2,4-D or dicamba, to help take down the weeds. Um, you want to be aware of, of what's around you when you're spraying any of those growth regulators, so be mindful of that. Um, but again, glyphosate, some kind of a PPO, and one of the growth regulators will usually do a pretty good job. And then, like I said, sometimes those leaves are going to be covered in, in dust or dirt. Uh, the plants will be pretty gnarled, so really getting your adjuvants right uh, are going to help, uh, particularly help that PPO work a lot better on the burn down. So usually, uh, an MSO or some type of a crop oil will help uh, really improve that control you see. Um, one last thing to think about is coverage with the stubble being around um, and these weeds, you know, they're going to be have the, the tops chopped off, but a lot of those lower leaves, you really want to make sure you're in that neighborhood of 15 gallons per acre uh, or higher to make sure you're getting really good coverage down into that stubble. Um, so that's really all I wanted to give an update on, and uh, we'll have more videos coming for you here in the future. Thanks for watching this video from the Gothenburg Water Utilization Learning Center. For more information, please call 308-537-4500.